and welcome to the Keeper Corner. My name is Carolyn and I am the Zoological Scientific Technician at the Lincoln Children's Zoo. And as a scientist here, a lot of my work revolves around conservation efforts. And so today we'll focus on our humbled penguins and their conservation. So in an ideal world, these guys would be in open oceans and rocky shorelines on the coastal regions of Peru and Chile. But with advancement in knowledge of this species and innovative approaches to replicating their habitat here at the zoo, they're actually getting the best care by living here with us. And for example, those will be things like veterinary examinations, which happen every single year. And so just like you would go to a doctor and make sure that you are healthy, you'll see these guys visiting the animal hospital to make sure that they're healthy as well. And during that time, it's really crucial for us to make sure that we can prevent certain diseases from happening, as well as other things like taking samples and actually advancing the medical knowledge we have on these guys. Because what's normal to a humble penguin isn't exactly normal to a parrot. And so they're all very different. And by working firsthand with them, we can learn a lot about them. But there are other things that we do as well, such as the penguin keepers will come and see them every single day to make sure that they're doing well, that they're enriched, and that they're happy. And that will include things like if the weather's just not cooperating one day and it's raining really hard, we'll just shelter them, shelter them and bring them back inside. But in the wild, humble penguins are faced with harsh reality and with a lot of challenges. And the more challenges that they face, the more it can affect their population. And that could include things like uh, not being able to find their fish during a certain season that's just really dry or just really cold. Uh, but that could also be just avoiding predators. And a really good example of that is called El Nino, which happens every two to seven years in their habitat. And it's a very unusual time where the weather is just very warm. And if you remember from our previous video, uh, they live in a warm temperature somewhat, but the water that they swim in is actually quite cold. And that is called the Humboldt Current. And that's a really cool nutrient-rich current that passes through their habitat. But when that gets really warm, all of a sudden the fish they usually eat, um, there's a lot less fish. And so that is because the vegetation that usually grows in that cold current cannot grow anymore. And so other things that can happen as well, because it's so much warmer in that area, uh, other top predators that usually live in the marine and ecosystems will swarm into the current and then they have to also avoid more predators than usual in addition to having less food. And if that's not enough to make you a little bit concerned about their conservation in the wild, other things like overfishing and human activities unfortunately affects them and it raises concern on the stability of their population. So currently, humble penguins are listed as a vulnerable species according to the IUCN Threat List of Threatened Species. And that's just a union that uh, ensures that we have very detailed records of the animal populations in the wild. And then they group them into categories that tells us if they need help or not. So for conservation efforts, it's extremely useful because you know which animals to focus on. And there are a lot of animals that they have on humble penguins is 32,000 in the wild. And while that may sound like a big number, it's actually a very big estimate because to count these guys, it's actually really difficult without affecting them in their environment. And that's the last thing you want to do when you're working on conservation is to disturb them in their daily activities. And so the fact that we know that the numbers are going down is actually quite scary because it means that there's probably even less in the, their natural habitat. And so much so that the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, decided that, you know what, to them, Hubble penguins are a uh, endangered population, and so they've listed them in the Endangered Species Act. And what that means is that um, they are protected by many laws now, so that was a huge step for their conservation. But hey, they're not the only ones working on humble penguin conservation. AZA accredited zoos take part in a species survival plan. And what that does, it makes sure that the populations in zoos are actually very stable and self-maintained as well as healthy. But let's back up a little. Species Survival Plan, what is that? So the Species Survival Plan 
it is uh, often abbreviated as SSP, so it's possible that you've heard it called as SSP, and it includes a large group of experts. So you'll find people like uh, biologists, veterinarians, reproductive physiologists, nutritionists, researchers, there's really a lot of people who have very big expertise on those topics, and they'll make sure that there's very current information on these animals that they're studying, as well as just uh, very valuable information to make sure that they're doing well both in zoos but also in the wild. And the way that this species survival plan works is that it's divided by species. So there's a program for Sumatran tigers, there's a program for colobus monkeys, and there's a program for humble penguins. And there's actually over 500 SSP programs out there, and that number is always increasing the more we learn about different species. Um, and what's really cool here at the zoo is that we have a few people that are part of that team of experts. So every single species will have their own team of experts. And for example, one of our lead keepers here uh, takes part of the Machi Tree Kangaroo SSP. And I take part in the Sand Cat Management SSP. But a big idea uh, behind the Species Survival Plan is that we're trying to oversee population management and ensuring di genetic diversity as well as breeding successes. But I'll get back to what that means in a minute. Uh, but the big idea is that all of the animals in zoos that are part of these SSP programs are being, over, uh, are being looked at by these experts. And that way we can really manage to make sure that their populations are increasing. So ultimately, we want to really take this amazing opportunity we have with these guys right in front of us, learn from them, as well as increasing their uh, populations in zoos to be able to help and understand what happens in the wild as well do field research as well in the wild and then by learning all of that we can hopefully have penguins for future and generations to come so I really hope that you learn a bit more about penguin conservation and don't forget to check out the activity in the comments below bye